Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to animate overlays in LumaFusion. So this is just a quick and easy tutorial. It's not going to go into too much depth, but just to quickly show you guys how I usually go about animating any type of overlay in LumaFusion. So let's go into the app and I'm just going to go into um, one of the projects that I have here. So I'm just going to be using this project as an example. So as you can see, this is just a very plain project, nothing too much going on here. But I'm going to be showing you guys if I add an overlay photo, how I would usually go about animating it. And it's just going to be very simple. So there are going to be two ways. One is going to be easier and one's going to be a bit more difficult to understand. So just bear with me. So as you can see, I have this little overlay here that I have just imported so say i want this thing to come up from the bottom of the screen and come up into the middle where it is right now what i usually do is i just go to the transitions area which you just access by tapping on this icon here going to transitions and then you have so many transitions to choose from and you can use any one which you want i'm just going to go with the push transitions for this one overlay so what you do is you just choose your overlay drag it to your clip you want it to be applied to i'm just going to make my timeline a bit bigger you can also edit the duration of your transition so that will estimate how long it will take for it to fully come up so if i play this clip here you'll see it just comes up like that it's a bit slow for me so i'm just going to slow it down Okay, so like that. So then you just quickly animated that and you can also, if you want it to go out again, if you want it to go back down, you have to again use the push up transition because that does the opposite. It pushes it down. But if you want it to go up, you want to use the push down transition because again, whatever it says the animation is that it does in the transition area, push down means it exits up. So here you can see it goes up when it exits. So that's how you, I usually, for basics, I'm really quick and easy go about animating any photos. You can even do this with text in LumaFusion. Anything you want to quickly animate and just bring in real quick and easy, but you don't want it just to appear on your screen. You want it to actually move in. I would use any transitions that LumaFusion has. You have slides, you have push-ins, but you also have wipes. So that kind of is different because it doesn't really move it stays in its spot but it kind of appears like that as you can see it's a whole different type of look to it but that's how i would usually go about animating any type of quick text or image or something like that to just come into the frame and then go out again now what you can do in LumaFusion is also use keyframes now keyframes is something that i am very hesitant to really explain to people it's a very hard thing to explain but i'm going to go into the clips editor and i'm going to try to do this as best as i can so you'll see you have this little plus circle sign here so this is your keyframe sign so this here is your duration that your element or your photo whatever your text is going to be on the screen so this is your timeline and here we have our little photo that we want to animate and um, what i'm going to do is i'm going to move it off of the screen entirely so you can see right now at the first point in time it's off of the screen you can be a bit more precise with your positioning by just editing these toggles here and some of these numbers if you want to be super precise with having it in the middle and whatnot for a second you're not going to be that precise but um playing around with keyframes is the only way i really got to learn how to use them so how it works is you set your keyframe. So I'm going to click here on the keyframe option here, tap on that. And now you move your frame by clicking on this arrow here. So I just moved one frame and now I'm going to move it to where I want it to appear. So it depends on how long you want it to take to move in. So if I just now move it all the way to where I want it to end, it's going to be a super quick transition. So if I play this, look, it's too quick for it to even like animate. It just kind of pops up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the adding keyframe again. Then I'm going to move it a few frames, like maybe here. And then I'm going to add another keyframe. So for this keyframe, I'm going to move it to here. So now if I play this clip, it's going to take the entire duration from the first keyframe to the second keyframe to make that animation. Like so. So that's how it works. But with using keyframes, you have a lot more options than when using transitions. So I can also then add maybe a keyframe here 
I'm going to make this even smaller. I can move it to here. So then you can see this is the animation so far. It goes like that and then like that. I can even have it go like this. I'm going to rotate it a bit and then move it a bit again. So that is really what you're doing. You're playing around with animating this thing um, and playing around with these like rotations and positions and everything so this is what this is a very like very random set of things that i'm doing here but you can get the gist of what i mean you can really animate anything by using keyframes in your videos you can move text around so if maybe with your hand you're moving from one end to the screen to another you can add text over that hand and have it follow it and track it by using keyframes i use keyframes a lot for tracking objects let's use this video as an example this is an old clip that i used for an example in a video and as you can see i have my hand there and i'm gonna choose a set of text and i'm gonna have it follow my hand as it moves it's gonna be a bit hard because my hand is moving very like all around the place but let me just show you guys so that you can get a real good idea of how i sometimes use keyframes generally so i'm gonna add a bit of text a really title okay so this is my text here so we're gonna go to with text you have to go to the frame and fifth section which is the section here so now we're back here so here again we have our timeline and we have our keyframes that we can insert by this clicking here so now I'm going to move a keyframe and have it follow my hand the entire time. So the next time I see it move again. Okay, so here, as you can see, my hand kind of moves. So I'm going to first add just a keyframe again here. And then I'm going to add, make it move to here. You'll see every time now, since I added that first keyframe, um, every time I m just move it slightly, my text it will automatically add a keyframe to my timeline because where we click the keyframing button so you don't have to click on the adding keyframe every time it will automatically do it if you move whatever um, you are moving um, it will add a keyframe so let's just do that for the entire duration of this clip so you just go through the keyframes the more keyframes you add in the more precise or yeah just more accurate it will look so yeah the more keyframes you insert the more the better results you will get i feel like that's what i've really learned a lot with using keyframes okay so now if i play this clip back you will see that kind of um in my rush of sh trying to show you guys how it follows my hand so there it is it just follows my hand the entire time however i positioned it with keyframing so i can make this longer and then just like do it for the entire duration of this clip but you get the gist of how keyframing works you basically animate something by editing its position the entire time for each frame so yeah that is how i usually go about animating anything i add in videos i either if i want a quick just coming in and out i just use the transition section is so easy and it's way easier than just playing around with keyframing the entire time. Um, but if I need something a bit more advanced and a bit more in detail, um, I would go for keyframing. Because keyframing really isn't that hard. It's just a hard concept to explain to people sometimes. But once you play around with it a bit, you will kind of like get the gist of it. Then it's really easy to, to use. So yeah, that's how I do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And maybe you found it helpful. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and comment down below any other questions you might have for me. Definitely subscribe by clicking on the icon on the screen, click on the playlist to see all of my other Luma Fusion related tutorials, and click on the video to my previously uploaded video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!